When everything you touch turns to gold, you've got the Midas touch. Hey, welcome back to Brain Muffins Beer Reviews. And here we have from Dogfish Head wearing a t-shirt. This is actually a happy accident. I just picked it out and then just happened to do it in this order. We have Midas Touch, Ancient Ale. When I was looking at my list of beer reviews on my website the other day, I could not believe that I have not done this one. This is an old favorite of mine. Now, part of the problem is I had this years and years and years ago when it was actually special at the Cincinnati Beer Fest. I don't even know how many years ago, and I've had it a couple times, so I probably was like, yeah, I've already had it. I don't necessarily want to know if I want to do it again. Oh, but man. So this is... Um, was based on a recipe found in a, in a uh, burial chamber, if I remember correctly. Found in 2,700-year-old drinking vessel. So they, they did a uh, of King Midas. So barley, honey, white musk, uh, grapes, and saffron. So my, if I remember the story is, was it University of Maryland? I forget. There's a professor who held a contest. They did an analysis of what was in the, um, God, I'm getting stuff everywhere tonight. In the vessels and three different breweries uh, competed and um, Sam and his crew at Dogfish had one. Now since then that professor has done several beers with uh, that group and uh, really fantastic bringing these old ideas back to life. So right on the nose you get hints of the saffron just a little bit but it's really that great must that really to me is the prominent flavor and aroma in here. And I can only imagine it's white grape we got a nice golden honey color, which is awesome. And it's just, yeah, and that grape and the honey and the saffron just kind of dance around. <clears throat> and there's a little hint of barley. So you have wine and mead. It's a somewhere between a wine and a mead. Our original ancient ales made with ingredients found in 27 year old. So I don't know how much the barley contributes as far as the uh, alcohol. I mean, this is 9%. It is fairly dry, so it tells me the honey and the grape is uh, must is really fermented. And uh, there's not a whole lot left. Otherwise, you'd get hints of sweetness and stuff like that. But beautiful coloring. Obviously, the Sam Adams glass and, and of course, now Sam Adams and Dogfish Head have merged. So another symmetry there. But I really like these Sam Adams glasses with the laser holing and that circle and the way it really brings the carbonation up. Keeps the head really nice. It's, I mean, this is engineered. It's got the right thickness for the glass and your hand and everything else. They've thought about it. Uh, maybe too much calculation. But to me, these glasses, and I, I know they make a bigger one too, is perfect for doing this. And unfortunately, they have two of them. But um, look at that color. It's awesome. I mean, I gave this a, an untap quite a while ago. I don't remember my last check-in. I don't know if it'll tell me. Um, I'm not going to check in again. So January uh, 10th, 2012 was the last time I checked into this beer. And I gave it a 5 out of 5, and I still give it a 5 out of 5. Uh, this is one of my favorite beers of theirs. It's fantastic. It says there's so much other stuff they make that, you know, I just haven't had a chance to, to get a lot of it. This was bottled a little more than a month ago. This was May the 9th. Uh, is when it was bottled. I don't know how well this will sell her. 9% is pretty good alcohol percentage. I've never really tried to sell her one of these, but maybe, you know, maybe I should. I don't know. Now, Sam Adams does have a brewery here in Cincinnati, so I have no idea if they're going to start doing some dogfish head. I don't know if it's more distribution. I think that's part of the what they're trying to work out with the merger and everything. But uh, the shoulders, these are different bottles than what Sam Adams has, and the shoulder here is too big for my capper, so I cannot reuse these. So I don't know if they're going to keep this, if they're going to go to a Sam Adams bottle, or if that's going to be a giveaway of where it's brewed. If they brew it here in the Sam Adams bottle, they do something different. Now here, my understanding is here in Cincinnati, all the sour beers that Sam Adams makes are made right here. Um, and they've got some good ones, and I've never viewed any of them. <laughs> so at least I, they used to. I uh, had a, a uh, tasting several years ago at Jungle Gyms. They talked about their sour beers. Hmm. But that is... To me, this is a good beer for people who don't like beer because it's not beer, really. It does have some barley in there, but it's really honey and um, the white wine, the white um, grape musk, uh, you know, white muscat, muscat grapes, not musk. I always keep saying musk. Muscat grapes, which give a little sourness to it, and then the saffron, which gives it this, this really interesting aroma 
and finished in, in um, kind of a hints of the Near East, I guess you could say. So, hmm. so anyway, so five out of five for me. So if you tried Minus Touch, you like it, not like it, do you like some of these ancient ales, some of these old ideas? You know, 2,700 years ago, people were drinking this. Maybe. I, that's the thing, too, is we don't necessarily know. We know it's buried with somebody, but is that just a burial offering? Or was it something that the rich could get? In that part of the country, saffron traveled well across land from India and, you know, uh, the, the Far East. And so it was in the crossroads. Obviously, honey very uh, well uh, you know, made by the bees and stuff, so probably acquired quite easily. But I don't know about the, the white um, grapes there. So, you know, the wine, for a lot of people, beer was, um, was not the, the commoner's drink. It was really the wine was that everybody had because um, beer took a little bit more to make. So the barley is probably just contributing to color and flavor and not the alcohol. That'd be my guess. All right. So let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for sharing. Do you like this, not like this? What other uh, beers from Talking to Chad do you want to see me review? I know I've reviewed a bunch of them. Check out my website, brianlake.com. Look at the list and let me know what you want to see. Thank you very much and we'll see you. How stupid was that, Tommy? Of course, I probably have this one checked in and untapped already. Oh, yeah. All right.